martial arts became a part of me um, as a teenager. Uh, actually, um, I've, been in, I've been involved with in sports all my life since I was a little kid. And um, I was uh, tr a star in all-around athlete in junior high school, high school, and all the way through college. And then I got involved in martial arts uh, as a teenager. But um, my main thing at that time when I was younger was to, was martial arts actually. It was more uh, football and track, baseball. Those were my sports. But then I start taking martial arts just to stay in shape and I got hooked on it. So then I start setting goals. And um, I went to, uh, after I graduated from high school, I had over 100, 100 football scholarships and I chose the University of Louisville in Louisville, Kentucky. So I went there and played football. Um, after that, I, after uh, attending University of Louisville, my first, uh, first year, I was a little disappointed with the school. It was more of a basketball school. But anyway, I uh, quit school there. And that was based, and the reason I quit school there is because uh, it was like um, a racial thing. Uh, maybe that was a big mistake in my life to, to quit because of that. But one of my best buddies on the football team by the name of Charlie Johnson, black guy from Alabama, actually he was, he was a junior, I was a freshman. But one afternoon in practice sessions, uh, in the practice session, the head coach called him a nigger. So I, it kind of upset me. So I said, hey, why am I putting out my blood, sweat, and tears for this, this coach and he's going out and he can call a black guy a nigger. So then I kind of got upset and I left the school. But anyway, I, I was already involved in martial arts somewhat. So uh, I got sidetracked from football and got more involved in martial arts. So I started studying hard in martial arts and I started setting goals. And then one day it came to me that I really have to decide what I want to do in life. So I decided that I wanted to become an actor because I felt that for me to be happy, uh, to do, for me to be happy and satisfied now, since I'm not going to go on and play football, professional football, I think acting was, would uh, make me happy. It would, it would give me everything I need out, needed out of life to be successful. And those things was to uh, make a lot of money, become very popular, and be very in influential and motivational to young black kids. So, uh, but first I said, well, I can't really just go to Hollywood and maybe become a star because I don't have anything to offer them. So, because I saw people like Jim Brown, other athletes go to Hollywood and uh, they were like um, uh, stars overnight because they had, they came from an incredible professional background, uh, athletic background. Jim was, a, was one of the greatest football players of all time, if not the greatest. And uh, so he went to Hollywood and became a star. I said, well, what can I do? I, so I said, why don't I become world's karate champion? and maybe I can use that to get into Hollywood. So that's what happened. I, uh, I went to the World Championships in 1970 to watch. And I told my buddies, I said, look, I'm gonna come back here the next year and I'm gonna be the world middleweight champion. They said, oh no, Jim, you're, you can't do that that fast. I said, yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I went home that night, I laid out my game plan. My goal was to become International Middleweight Karate Champion 1971. And to use that goal, to pyramid that goal into becoming an actor. So um, I trained and trained for a year and I became, I went back and I won the Middleweight Championship. And then I was ready to pursue my next goal. So uh, I opened up a karate studio just to have some money coming in and I, they give me time to go study acting, but I didn't get the opportunity to go study acting because uh, an opportunity presented itself in Hollywood to me before I had a chance to study acting. And, I, and that opportunity was with a movie called Melinda. I was at my karate studio teaching a couple of the staff members from uh, this magazine called Soul Publications. And uh, one of the producers on Melinda called uh, this lady and said, hey, look, anytime I need something different, you always can find that person or that thing for me. But I know, I got something here I bet you don't know. I bet you can't find for me. I need a guy who's uh, very good at karate and can teach the star of our film karate. So she said, no problem. My karate instructor can do that, Jim Kelly. So um, I went in to meet with the people, the producers, and that's where my career started. Uh, I went in just to teach the star of karate. 
and uh, they talked to me. They said, okay, we want you to teach the star karate, but come back tomorrow, we want to talk to you again. So I went back the next day, and they told me they were going to give me a uh, co-starring role in the movie. So yeah, co-starring role in the movie, okay. And remember now, I don't know one thing about the acting business at this point. I didn't, nothing, I didn't even know anything about it. So they said, don't worry, the director will talk you through it. But you have the look, you fit, you, you know, you got this, you got the look we're looking for. So we'll talk you through the acting. So they did. I thought I was terrible. <laughs> I really thought I was terrible. But I thought I looked good on, so I had the presence, but my acting skills I thought was terrible. I was, oh man, I thought I was, it, it, it was passable, I guess. So anyway, uh, at that point, they told me some people on the set were telling other actors, saying, Jim, you're over now. You're going to get all kinds of offers. And I said, oh, yeah? Which, to me, I didn't really realize what they were talking about because uh, these were veteran actors. So they, were, they knew once a person uh, has, has a certain amount of screen presence, uh, screen uh, time, and you know, good chance you're going to get some offers, especially if you come off pretty good. So I said, okay. So I was at my karate studio for about two or three months. My telephone wasn't ringing. I said, what, where's all these offers, you know? But then all of a sudden, this, this little Jewish lady that I met who was representing me, Nora Sanders, she called me at my karate studio about five o'clock in the afternoon. And she said, uh, Jim, they're casting a film out at Warner Brothers. It's a fight film. Now you won't get the part, but I want you to go out there and meet these producers. So I said, okay. She said, they already have the guy they want, but they're having a little problem negotiating contracts. So they're looking at other people, but they're going to take him eventually. I, but this is an opportunity for you to meet the producer. So I went out there, and uh, it was Warner Brothers, Fred Weintraub, Paul Heller, who produced Enter the Dragon. And they said, uh, do you know karate? I said, yeah. So they said, well, show us a little moves. So I started jumping around, moving around, kicking all the place. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. So take the script, look at the part of Williams, and go out in the lobby, check it out, come back in five minutes, and let us know what you think. So I, when I came back in, they said, uh, what do you think? I said, okay, it's pretty good. I, I like that part. And they said, well, you, do you know Bruce Lee? I said, no, I don't know him personally, but uh, I know of him. And uh, they said, uh, okay, you got the part. I said, oh, okay. Fred Weintraub, Paul Hiller said, okay, you got the part. Um, when can you leave for Hong Kong? So I said, I can leave now. They said, we got a passport? I said, no, I don't have a passport. I, you got to get a passport. So anyway, I uh, ended up in Hong Kong. I was in Hong Kong for uh, three months with, it, with Enter the Dragon. And um, that was an experience. Not only was Hong Kong an experience, but it was an incredible experience working with Bruce Lee. I, um, and in case all my fans out there who are who, listening to this documentary, I want to let you know I wasn't supposed to get killed in that movie. Originally, I was not supposed to get killed in that movie. John Saxon was supposed to get killed. And uh, at that time, that was my second film. And uh, John Saxon, I don't know, maybe had made some like, I don't know, 20 films for then. I really don't know. But anyway, his agent said, uh, look, if you want John for the for End of the Dragon, Jim has to get killed, not John. So of course, I, get, I have to get killed because uh, I, uh, I only had two films to my credit. So I ended up getting killed. and. Um, but it was all right. It was, uh, End of the Dragon to me though was like, um, I see good parts and bad parts of it. Uh, the good part was that it gave me a lot of exposure. It really gave me exposure all over the world. It opened up incredible doors for me as far as uh, my next move in the film business. Um, what I really didn't like about End of the Dragon was that I didn't really get a chance to do my thing because it was Bruce Lee's film, and I love Bruce Lee. As far as I'm concerned, he's the greatest martial artist to ever lived. Uh, it was his film. So uh, I didn't get a chance to show the, all those people that saw that film my true talent, because it's like, shoot this, boom, 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 gone. Okay, we'll move on. Okay, let's go. Boom. Bruce, one fight film, take all day to fix. You set up, shoot it all day. Same fight film for me would be like, and, and, the tech, the fighting, I didn't get a chance to really show my technique. It was like very basic, so I didn't get a chance to really do what I wanted to do until I signed a three picture deal with Warner Brothers. But that's what I really didn't like about End of the Dragon, that I didn't really get a chance to really do my thing, really be me and fight the way I fight, you know. So, um, but it worked out. 
because when I, one day I was driving to a location, Fred Weintraub said, hey Jim, how you like the film business? I said, oh, it's great, I like it. But just, let, just let me get back to Los Angeles. <laughs> Three months in Hong Kong is too long, you know, so anyway, finally got back to Los Angeles. When I got back to Los Angeles, my agent called me again, Nora Sanders, she said, Jim, we've got to go to Warner Brothers. I said, what, what's so important about going to Warner Brothers? We've got to go out there. I said, okay, she said, because they wanted to talk to you about something. I said, all right. And so you meet me, as a matter of fact, meet me right here, where we're shooting this, this at this location. She was living at this location at the time. So it's, that's funny. So uh, she said, meet me at, uh, at my place. And um, I said, okay. The deal was that Warner Brothers wanted to talk to me about a three picture deal to star in three films for them, plus an option on a TV series. To me, it was like, Three picture deal, all right, maybe, maybe it's because I, I feel today I don't, I don't take this business that serious, I don't, I don't take myself that serious because it's something, this business is something that's completely out of my control, you know, but anyway, even then I said, hey, uh, okay, well, let's go talk to one of the brothers about three picture deal. Now, that had been some veteran actors, some actors that really, they've been in the business longer than me, they would, went, they'd probably, oh man, I got a three picture deal, oh man, you know, oh man, I see my house in Beverly Hills, see my Ferrari on the, to me, it's like, hey, okay, we got three picture deal. Let's go talk to him. You know, so that's the way I looked at it. So anyway, I ended up talking to the chairman of the board at Warner Brothers, uh, Ted Ashley at the time. Did a three picture deal with Warner Brothers. Signed a, a three picture deal, option on TV series, and some merchandise and stuff. So I did that. Black Bell Jones, the first one. Golden Needles, the second one. Hot Potato, the third one. And um, Black Belt Jones was an uh, incredible experience. It was my first, actually my first film that I was a star. I'm the man, you know? Glor Gloria Hendry was in that, very beautiful lady. I enjoyed working with her, but the, it was me. The, the, everything, I was the man that had to make that thing work. And that was, and I, I, I didn't feel that much pressure, but I, it was an incredible experience for me. And that film made a lot of money. It made, uh, like I said before, it made a, a close to $20 million, around $20 million on, on a $400,000 budget. And then I did Golden Needles with Joel Don Baker, Elizabeth Ashley, and Burgess Meredith. That was a successful film. Then I did Hot Potato, by myself again. Uh, Oscar Williams wrote that script. We went to Thailand, we shot that in Thailand. Movie shot for $300,000 maybe. Made, made something like $2.5 million in New York in one week. Over $2 million. So now, here's a film made for $400,000, $2 million in New York alone. So I thought, like I said before, I thought the name of this game was for the star to make money. Is, is he box office? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was making money for these people. A lot, a lot of money for these people. And at this time, I wasn't getting any type of percentages. You know, it was just because I was new on the block. So then after that, I um, started doing films for other people. And I did some very good films with other people. I worked with Jim and Fred and how many films? Three the Hard Way, uh, Take a Hard Ride, One Down, Two to Go, and uh, did some other films. Uh, but uh, that's the way I got started in the, in the movie industry, you know? That's the way I got started. Well, I'll tell you one thing, uh, going back to Enter the Dragon, um, one thing I missed about that, and I don't know what happened to Bruce Lee, uh, I've heard so many stories, so I really don't know. Uh, but I know one thing: before whatever happened, I uh, was supposed to be another film with him. So before I left Hong Kong, Bruce and I talked, and he said, "Look, Jim, we're going to do another film. Will you come back to Hong Kong with me and star in my next film with me?" And that's that's the way we left it. Next thing I knew, you know what happened. So uh, I, that would have been one hell of an experience to do a film with Bruce and be one of the stars in the film with him, you know. So uh, that didn't happen, but uh, who knows. So I, uh, I don't know. At least I had a chance to work with him, meet him, and learn a lot from him, yeah.